Greetings and welcome. Today I'm going to take you through all the steps involved in designing a puzzle in Inkscape that will be laser cut on an epilogue laser. If you're using a different laser cutter, your mileage may vary, but I think Inkscape is a great place to start. Now some of these specifics are related to an assignment in my class, but hopefully it'll help you too. All right. Here we go. So I've already opened up Inkscape and I have already found an image that I want to put on my puzzle. So I'm going to go to File, Import, and drop in an image of a P51 Mustang. I think it'll make a nice puzzle. Now for the purposes of what I'm doing, I want to make this puzzle no larger than five by seven inches. So the first thing I'll do is make sure that my image is properly sized. And I'm gonna do that by making sure that I have set the measurements up on the top menu bar to inches, that I have the lock, which constrains the proportions, locked. And then I'm gonna change, in this case, the width of my image to seven, and when I click over here into height, it will automatically resize to keep it in proportion. And I've got a five by seven inch image of a Mustang. Now it's time to start our puzzle making. First step is to put a cut line around the edge of the puzzle. And I'll do that by grabbing the rectangle and square shape from the left hand toolbar, bringing it over, and clicking and dragging a shape around my image. And I'm going to zoom in with the plus button. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger here just so that I'm not cutting off any of the airplane. And space, hold down the space bar. It lets me drag around with the mouse. See how I'm doing? Looks great. Zoom out with the minus button. Now, if you want to make sure that your image is exactly centered, follow along, friends. I'm going to take the selection arrow, and I am clicking and dragging. So I select both the picture of the airplane and the cut line around it. So you'll see there are two dotted lines. And it's not totally centered. Easy to fix. Let's go up to Object, go down to Align and Distribute. There's our Align and Distribute menu on the right-hand side. And I'm going to work with these two buttons. First, I will center it on the vertical axis. Keep an eye on the airplane. Bumped it over a little bit to the right. And I'm going to now center it on the horizontal axis. Oh, small change there. And we are good to go. It's now centered. I'm going to close the alignment window. <clears throat> and now I have my cut line on the edge and I'm going to use this as the starting point for my first puzzle piece. Plus button, <coughs> excuse me, to zoom in a little bit. I will grab from the left hand toolbar the Bezier tool. We'll call it the pen tool. And I am going to put the pen tool roughly on the cut line. It does not have to be perfect friends. We're going to adjust that later and I will click to drop the first node. That's that little square. And now I'm just dragging. Now watch what happens when I press down on the mouse and I click and drag. The color turns blue and I'm able to make a curve. Now I have let go and it's red and I'm curving in the other direction. I'm not holding the left mouse button down. Now I'm going to hold it down again and start to curve the other direction. Curve it more the other way. And these don't have to be the final shape for your puzzle piece. I will show you after we're done how we can refine the shapes of the individual pieces. And I'm going to bring that back to the cut line and double click. So let's rough out some other pieces here. And back to start. 
like so. You can do some in the middle. They don't all have to originate or begin on the cut line. And here we are finishing up the last piece of today's puzzle. All right. So I have made all the cut lines that I want <coughs> for the interior shapes on the puzzle. Now my next move is going to be to adjust the line thickness. On an epilogue laser cutter, the line thickness must be one thousandths of an inch for it to cut. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit again, grab the selection arrow from the top left hand corner of the toolbar, and I am clicking and dragging to make sure I select all of my lines. Now I will go up to Object, Fill and Stroke, and let's just check. I don't want any fill at all. I have a stroke paint color that is black, and I'm going to go to Stroke Style and change my measurement to inches and make it one thousandths of an inch, 0 .001, and press Enter. So now I've resized all the line thicknesses so they will cut. So we're good to go, but I'm not ready yet to send it to the laser cutter because if we plus button in, you will see, check it out right here, it's rare that all of your lines are going to perfectly match up. So this is where we get to adjust the lines, the shape, and definitely make sure that all lines begin and end at another line because it's a puzzle. All the pieces have to cut. To do these final adjustments, I'm going to click on the Node tool. It is on the left-hand toolbar, top left, just below the selection arrow. I will click it and then select one of my lines. And you'll notice that this line now has these little squares that appear on it that are called nodes. First thing I'm going to do is grab an individual node and click and drag it. And I am just verifying by using the plus button to zoom in that this is nicely in contact with the other line. And that looks good. Minus to zoom out. Maybe I want to make some adjustments on a particular line shape. So I'm going to grab this one. See, I've got all the nodes that I can work with. And I can do a couple different things. I can grab the individual node. That's the square that turns red when I click and drag on it. And I can drag that square and change the shape. I can also use these handles on either side of the square and change the angle of the curve or by dragging the handles back and forth, the depth of the curve. So you have lots of control there. So feel free to watch as I, in fast forward, go around and check all of my cut marks. Here we go. You have to do the same thing, friends. Detail counts. All right, now I have gone through and checked all of my lines to make sure that I have connected lines so the pieces will all cut out as individual pieces. We're nearly there, folks. Last steps are to change the document properties, save it as a PDF, and get to laser cutting. So here we go. My next move is I'm going to click on the outer cut line with the selection arrow, go to File, Go to Document Properties. Document Properties window is open right here. Look in the middle. I'm going to change units from millimeters to inches. I'm going to click on Resize Page to Content. And I like to put a one-tenth of an inch margin on all four sides of the piece that I am cutting. If you're in my class, note that if you don't put a margin all the way around, I won't cut out 
your design. So make sure you do this. All four sides, top, bottom, left, right, great. Click resize page to drawing or selection and we can close this window. Notice that it has now shrunk the document to fit around our puzzle. The puzzle is still seven by five inches. It's fine. Last step, folks, is to save it as a PDF. Go to File, go to Save As. Now, if you haven't been saving all along, you first want to make sure that you save in an Inkscape format in case you have to come back and do any work. Saving in the SVG format allows you to do that. Next up, I'm going to go back to File, Save As, switch to Portable Document Format. My file name remains the same. Click Save. This window, nothing needs to be changed. Click OK. And now, if you're in my class, you're ready to email this to me so that I can laser cut it for you. Otherwise, happy laser cutting. Thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, drop them down below. And have a great day.